At this time, I will call to order the Stillwater Economic Development Authority meeting for April 15th, 2024. Trustees, action on the consent docket. Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. Motion and a second to approve consent. Please vote. The vote of five to zero, the consent docket is approved. Next up, general order is the Stillwater Chamber of Commerce, Commerce Economic Development quarterly report from our representatives from the Stoder Chamber of Commerce. We get a double header tonight. We do have a double header. Um, good evening, trustees and mayor. Elaine Zanotti, um, president and CEO of the Stillwater Chamber of Commerce. I couldn't be more excited tonight to stand before you and be able to introduce our director of economic development, Carrie Moore. Um, she uh, will deliver a great report um, you guys probably in your packet got a lot of information. She hit the ground running, started the end of February, and um, between then and now, I don't think she's let any grass grow under her feet. She has um, stepped in. The exciting thing about Stillwater right now is it seems to be on the radar for a lot of um, interesting projects. We are working on two major ones right now, which we are very excited about. Um, she'll report a little bit more on that. We did a kind of a bird's eye view um, of the report because there was a lot of information in there. Um, did want to clarify, one of the things that we included this time in the report is RFPs that were re received um, and a little bit of information about them and then the reasons why we did or did not pursue them. Wanted to expand on that a little bit. Didn't want to leave Carrie on her first one um, doing that. One of the things that we are looking to do um, as we move forward is two things. One is get together with um, city administration um, as well as Carrie and myself to talk about accepting RFPs and what makes sense for the city of Stillwater. We don't want to answer an RFP just to answer an RFP. We want to make sure it makes sense for the um, forward movement that we seem to be seeing in the city of Stillwater. We also, um, we wish there was a general way that RFPs were done and we got this, we, that each one wanted the same information every time. So sometimes when we get an RFP and there's a short turnaround time, we are mindful of the current projects we are working on as well as what ourselves and the city staff are doing. And so don't want to um, overwhelm both sides of it as far as answering that. So we've had some great RFPs sent to us, um, but we also have some ones that weren't a good mixture um, based on what the requirements were. So wanted to give some um, clarification on that. I will well, turn before, this now. Before you move on, I do, yeah. I do want to talk about that a little bit. Because sure. I, I frankly was disturbed by the fact that we have RFPs coming to us. We're looking to the chamber to be that voice mm -hmm. to outside entities. And you basically said, we're busy with these two, so we're not going to deal with these three. Well, I'm, I apologize if the wording looked that way, um, Trustee Clark. I think one of the things that we wanted to do is show that there were a few of those that did not meet the requirements um, based on what they were asking for. And then based on the fact that we do have two large projects, it is probably not good to try and go ahead and try and uh, have another entity come in that is probably not going to be the right fit when we're in the midst of working on these two big projects. So it didn't make it look like, we don't want to make it look like we're not interested in working on these projects, but we want to be mindful of where we are currently with the two projects we're working on and what the requirements are for the ones sent in. So um, there is a lot of interest on the Armstrong facility, so I'll say that right up front. Um, it's wonderful. Um, it's a great um, um, building and facility, but in sifting through those RFPs, some of the requirements and some of the things they're asking for were just either not a good fit or just things that we couldn't get to them in a timely manner, and so we needed to go ahead and just say at this point we're going to we're going to hold off on those. Okay. Is that on those on specific ones? Because there is a line in here that says RFP responses on hold as we navigate Verde and Rohan. Um, some of those could be in a conflict. Others. Yeah, some of those could be in a conflict okay. of what we are doing with those two projects, and so in order to ensure that we keep the. Um, um, integrity of the um, privacy of what we are working on currently we want to be careful about accepting those other projects and working towards those so you're not like not responding to any no we are responding no this. we have a very good partnership you. with the Oklahoma City Chamber and they understand what we're going um, what we're dealing with we want to be transparent and upfront to let you know we are receiving RFPs we are being mindful of the ones that are coming in and believe me if there was a project that was coming in that needed to be addressed and we wanted to have them come to Stillwater we certainly would respond mm -hmm. okay and I'll turn it over to Carrie. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to open this up. Can we see that behind me? Are we good? Okay. All right. So 35 working days. I felt like 
I don't know about you guys, but for 35 working days, I was pretty stinking proud of that report. Um, there's a lot happening. So, oh, the formatting messed up. The accomplishments. Um, we have started our monthly meetings with the city. Um, Brady and I are, are communicating well, um, not just in the meetings, but outside of as things come. Hey, does this make sense? Could our utilities handle something like this? Can you show me where to find this information? So that line of communication is open um, and going well um, and learning as we go. The hub groundbreaking will happen May 1st. We are working with that. We already are um, moving forward. We're committed to that and they are excited. So that's positive. Greater Oklahoma City Partnership Resources. So this is something that we are really excited to utilize and take advantage of. Um, this is where a lot of our RFPs are coming from and being sorted through. So we've created another line of, this is what Stillwater has to offer. We are taking what they have, we're putting what we have available, and we're working together with them to see um, how to make it move forward in the right ways and very intentionally. The Select Oklahoma Membership a little picture of that up there. We have joined Select Oklahoma, that is an economic development um, association, and the goal of that is to understand what is going on throughout our state um, and advocacy in bringing in new business and looking at um, expansion and retention as well as workforce development. So there's a lot that goes into what we have available, and we are excited about that. We also had a site visit for Project Verde and Project Rohan. Um, they are moving forward. Um, there's not a whole lot we can talk about with that, except that we are feeling positive and excited about both of those. We have done BRE visits. You guys will have seen in that report. We are already moving forward quickly with those and finding out how our existing businesses are doing, what they need um, to help stay here and stay alive and well, and then if they have any expansion plans or efforts or needs. We also have SBU, which is our small business university that is coming up to support our local small businesses. That was the done one time. Uh, last year was the first year. We learned a lot from it. We've gotten a lot of really great feedback. We are structuring, structuring this year's SBU um, with a strong partnership with Meridian to focus on our existing small businesses and what their needs are. So we have been extremely intentional on who we are having there, um, what gaps that we have heard in these BRE visits, as well as the feedback we got last year to line out um, all of the content and make that impactful. We have Lemonade Day coming up. May 4th is a big day, um, but may the 4th be with you and come have lemonade with us, right? So Lemonade Day is a program that we have started to help um, young entrepreneurs or envisioned entrepreneurs figure out how to start a business. We have partnerships. Um, we do a taste test. We do a bank day where they learn about starting a small business, uh, being an entrepreneur, as well as the finance side of that. And then Lemonade Day is they get to start their business, their lemonade stand. And they set up throughout town. We have what are called sweet spots. And we are excited about that. If you have questions, visit us um, on our website and get signed up. And then we have started a partnership. We are working with um, the Washington Street District on how do we get people down to Washington Street for things other than the bars um, and game days, right? So how do we support them in slow season? So we are working on a project called Summer on the Strip um, to see how we can encourage families and actually have kids zones and different things. And they are excited about it. We're excited. We appreciate the city's support in making that happen. So. Um, that's the accomplishment so far. Do you have questions before we talk about the mindset? I do. Yes. So the Select OK, how does it differ from the Greater OKC Partnership? Are they Great. two different entities? They are, yes. So um, Greater Oklahoma City is through the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, and that works with a 10-county region, whereas Select Oklahoma is statewide. Um, and so, for example, I went to the first my first Select Oklahoma meeting and was able to connect with um, the ADA Economic Development Committee and, and how they operate. And so it's just a bigger access um, to what's happening in economic development throughout the state and not just in our region. Okay. Carrie, um, the SBU, Lemonade Day, somewhere on the Strip, all cool things from the chamber not really core to the economic development function through the city. They go into part of the contract that we have with you guys. There are outliers in the contract that are specific for 
um, supporting small businesses and offering local shop and um, shop local incentive initiatives. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm open to ideas if you have other ones. No. It's okay. Good. Yeah. So a, a, a broad range of things you guys are trying to get done. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, very, I will say, um, eye-opening for me to go and be part of the greater Oklahoma City because when you look at economic development in other communities, um, they have an individual person that handles each area of economic development, whereas here in Stillwater and some of the smaller communities, we have one person trying to do all of those things. So um, it's eye-opening, and I would love to have somebody ride along on some of that. Any others? Okay, so really the mindset. Um, this was 35 days, working days leading to today. That includes today of what we've been able to do since I stepped into this role. Elaine and I were very, um, I want to say intentional about what we wanted to do. So we sat down, what has gone well. I know we met with the mayor and the city manager and, and talked about historically what has been well, what has, could be better, and what would we like to do different, more better different um, with economic development. And so we took that conversation, we lined out goals, and we put them together. And the idea is, is that we're looking at economic development in not just how do we get the win and what feels good, but what can be sustainable for Stillwater, what's going to be best for our residents, what's going to be best for our community. So any questions on our mindset moving forward? Okay, then what to expect? We are working on an RFP process. So the process is ours, the decision is theirs. So instead of spending our time and energy responding to every RFP that comes through, we have a set vision for where do we have gaps in Stillwater? What are we looking to respond to? And how do we find those businesses? So that's in the process of creating a process, right? Um, we want to be extremely intentional with Commerce Place. We have had a lot of inquiries of people wanting to quote unquote secure the land. They don't have a plan for the land um, and it seems like they want to secure the land to then turn around and sell it for a profit where we want to be extremely intentional about what goes in there so that it is good for the community, it is good for um, our industrial partners. Any questions about Commerce Place? Okay, Grow Stillwater website updates. I have not had a whole lot of time. This is in our 60 day area, not so much my 30, um, to work on the website and what has happened, where it needs to go and how do we keep the ball rolling on that. Then we will have an economic development committee. So we already have that. Um, we're working on re-engaging them. We have our next economic development committee coming up. So we wanna use those people that wanna get involved to help us identify gaps and be a voice for people that um, there is a lot of misconception about economic development and thinking that it is only for chamber members. It is not. We are housed under the chamber, but we're here for the community. So how can we utilize them to get a broader, broader voice and a broader connection? And then I am working on some economic development training, professional development. As you look at the website, I wanted to let um, you all know I've been participating in a fellowship with the George Kaiser Family Foundation called 1050 Forward that is focused on micropolitan communities, so communities between 10,000 and 50,000 are our size, our, right? Yeah. So more kind of in line, Ada actually, there's three inaugural um, communities, Ada, Muskogee, and Stillwater. Muskogee has done a very cool website that I think is something to look at as we are considering updates. Um, it's called Muskogee, it's the title of the website is Muskogee Means More. It has some really great, um, just like marketing pieces about their community and really um, includes a lot of information that could be ben maybe beneficial as we kind of reevaluate our website um, around economic development. I think it's really remarkable and could be, I think, knowing um, Elaine and the chamber and all the creativity that's there, I'm, I'm certain you'll find something that might be interesting to you all. I appreciate that. Anything else? Okay. And I'm going to add with the quote of add value to people because you value people. That's a big mindset of what we're, we're doing. We wanted to add value because we value the community. Thank you, Carrie. Okay. Thank, thank you. Further questions? Yeah, well, before they get away, I just want to, I want to thank Elaine for something. I had, I had reached out to you about the church at Cimarron Plaza, and 
there was an article in the news press indicating they had to move and they weren't having any luck finding anything and uh, the chamber can't help me and because I guess because they're not members and you and I texted back and forth several times that day and you tried to reach out to them you were unsuccessful ever getting a hold of anybody but I appreciate the effort you went to to try to help that church through their struggle so thank you thank you all thank you. nice job Carrie thank you next time we're not going to take it easy on you challenge accepted <laughs> all right that takes us to resolutions resolutions this will be CETA-2024-1 a resolution adopting revisions to the purchasing policy for the city of Stillwater and its trusts as was discussed at the city council meeting trustees questions comments or action on the resolution I move adoption of resolution CETA-2024-1 a motion and a second please vote the vote of five to zero resolution CETA-2024-1 is adopted any reports from the officers of the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second to adjourn CETA. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, the Stillwater Economic Development Authority is now adjourned.